7.3 use functions involving e. Oh sure, everybody loves pi, but sooner or later their interest converges on me. And of course you're going to learn about what this means in this lesson, but you should be thinking interest like we learned about compound interest in a previous lesson. So today you're going to learn about this awesome number called e. And as an economist, that, that's what I studied before I became a teacher, I did a lot with e because that is exponential growth. And e is a pretty, pretty cool number. And we'll just talk about the basics of it today. e is just the natural base e or the Euler number. And it was discovered and named by Leonard Euler, and make sure that you pronounce it Euler, otherwise mathematicians will just laugh in your face, and you would never want that to happen, would you? So in order to start us off, I just want to look at our calculator and see what E really means. So let's go to our calculators. In Y1, please just put in this 1 plus 1 over N, let's call that X, to the X power. Okay, and so what I said here is that E equals the limit as N approaches infinity. What the heck am I trying to say there? What I'm trying to say is that as this N value, or in our case X, gets humongous, then this equation right here, which is what we put into our calculator, 1 plus 1 over X to the X power, is going to approach this. Let's see if in fact that happens. We haven't done much with table of values in this class yet, but basically by pressing second table here, you can go to a table of values. So why don't we go ahead and do that? And when we do that, you'll see that, you know, I was talking about X getting huge. Well, X getting huge, I'm going to have to press this arrow a whole lot of times, and my hand's going to get really, really tired. So there's something really great here called the table set. And that's a lot like the window when you're graphing it, and that's why they're one on top of one another. So go to second table set. You'll see that our table set right now is starting at 7. Let's start it at 10, just for the purpose of this example. You could start at something huge since we want to look at big values. And instead of going by just ones, this delta sign just means the change. The delta table means a change in the table or your step or how big you're going by. All right, so here you'll see that our table is now starting at 7. Um, so we could just start at something like much larger. Let's just start at 100, though. Let's not start too big. Let's concentrate on changing this delta table. So that's just the change in your table or your step or how big your x increment is going by. Let's also make that 100, OK? And so now when I go to second table, you'll see that I started 100, and I'm going by hundreds. And you'll see that my number is getting closer and closer to what I told you it was. And let's go a lot further down. Let's just press the down key a bunch of times. All right, it's getting closer, but it's still not that close. So why don't we go to table set, and now let's just make this really big. Let's make it like 100,000. Second table to go back to the table. And now you'll see it is converging to that number that I told you that it would. Again, your calculator is rounding here, so that's why it's rounding that number. One thing that I want to do before I move on is I want you to remember our compound interest equation. Remember that was A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the NT. Well, some of you might be seeing some similarities. We'll talk more about it as we go a little bit further into this lesson and a lot more in class, not just for this lesson, but in the future. So I want to start you off easy. We're going to start with just some exponents. Remember, E is just a number. Don't ever forget that. E is not a variable. It's nothing funky. It is a number. It is a number that is approximated by 2.71828. Just like pi is a number that's approximated by 3.14. Okay, E is just a number. So here, when I'm doing E to the ninth times E to the sixth, that's no different than saying, well, what was 2 to the ninth times 2 to the sixth? We had the same basis, so we added exponents. We got 2 to the 15th. Okay, that's a little aside. 
It's not part of the problem. This is going to be same bases, add the exponents, e to the 15th, and you leave it like that. Same deal here. Divide the number part, so 60 divided by 12 is 5. Now you have e to the 8th divided by e to the 3rd. You have 8 of these e's on the top, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and you have 3 of them on the bottom. 3 of them cross out. You have 5 of them left, e to the 5th power. In other words, remember e to the 8 minus 3 because same basis, division, subtract the exponents. This case here, you're going to do negative 10, you're going to cube it, then you're going to do e to the negative 5x, and you're going to cube that. Negative 10 to the third power is still a negative, and a little trick there is just means it has three zeros on the end. Then we do e, a power to a power, multiply, becomes more powerful, e to the negative 15x. The negative exponent must go down in the denominator. This is just a negative number, so it stays up. You see there's no negative exponents associated with this 1,000. But the e goes down there, and that exponent becomes positive. That is our answer. When I ask you to use your calculator to evaluate, go to your calculator. The E button that you're going to want to use is right here on top of the LN key. So you just do second E to the sixth power. Boom. And then we'll do the same thing for B. So we do E to the negative 0.28. Boom. Let me just write in what we got. We got 403. 0.429 for this one, and we got 0.756 for this one. Of course, since this is equivalent to 1 over e to the 0.28, you would expect for the answer to be something less than e. So just like we saw exponential growth before, when your b was greater than 1, and we saw exponential decay before when your b was between 0 and 1, we're going to see exponential growth now in our model y equals ae to the rx. We're going to see exponential growth when that r is greater than 0. And we're going to see exponential decay when that r is less than 0. And so since this is a negative number, wouldn't that just make this go in the denominator? It's just like what we just saw here. Because we had a negative number as the exponent, it made the number smaller than e was. Whereas when we had a positive here, it made the number bigger than e was. So that's really all you're dealing with. Um, the domain of both of these functions is going to be all real numbers. It takes in any real value of x. The range for both of these is just y is greater than 0. One of them is going up, exponential growth. One of them is going down, exponential decay. The asymptote for both of them is just y equals 0. So this is just your base case. And then we'll do transformations just like we were doing before. So basically, this is the same thing we were doing in 7.1 and 7.2. It's just that we're using e as the base instead of having a b as the base. We're just using a different number, and that number happens to be e, which is 2.718. Some important properties when you're graphing these, I will definitely look for, if you're graphing the base case, that you're going through 0, 1. e to the 0 power is always going to be 1. The other point that I'm going to be looking for is 1, comma e. This is just e, right? e is 2.718, because when we put in a 1, e to the 1 power is just e. When we're looking at exponential decay, e to the 0 power, e to the negative 0 power, it's still 1, so I'm going to be looking for that 0, 1. And then here we just have 1, comma, e to the negative 1 is 1 over e. 1 over e should be equal to that. So those would be the two points that I would be looking for on that one, as well as your asymptote here. That's really important, your asymptote at y equals 0 on both of them. 
graph and state the domain and range. So in this one here, we'll note our vertical stretch of by a factor of four, so really we're not shifting anything up or down. So the domain is just going to stay all real numbers and the range is just going to stay y is greater than zero. So let's go ahead and put our asymptote in there. Again, I did not shift up or down at all in this problem. Let's graph some points. I really don't need that many. I'm going to be fine if you do 0 and 1. When I do 4 times e to the 0 power, anything to the 0 power is 1. So I must go through 0 for a really important point. 1, 2, 3, 4. And when I put in 1, I'm going to need my calculator here. I'm going to get 6.59 about. You might want to try that on your calculator. Make sure that you're using that E button OK. So. You might notice that this thing has grown pretty fast here. Now in this example here, you'll notice the negative, which means that we are dealing with a decay here. We are also shifting this guy two units left and four units down. Because we're shifting it four units down, I can immediately say, well, the range is now y is greater than 0 minus 4, y is greater than negative 4. So let's put that asymptote in. 1, 2, 3, 4. and our domain does not change, all real numbers. For the points that I want to choose here, since I'm shifting this guy two units to the left, I'm going to use x as negative two, because when I put a negative two there, I get e to the zero power, you see that? And that is one. One minus four is negative three. That's the point I really want you to start seeing, that negative two, negative three. All right, that's what I'm going to be looking for. That's what makes that zero. If you can't do anything else in your head, and you know what? If I don't have a calculator for this problem, I have enough information to just graph it. I have one point. I have the asymptote. I know that this is an exponential decay function. So this is how, as we become expert mathematicians in this class, we can start just sketching what the graph looks like. It doesn't matter what it looks like exactly, really. I need to know the general shape, and I just did that. You can go ahead and plot one more point to make sure you've got it. But as you get into higher math classes, you don't want to whip out your calculator for everything. You just want to be able to sketch a general shape of what it is. And you can see I had an asymptote here. I knew this was an exponential decay. I knew what the domain and range was. I knew one point really easily that I could do in my head. Boom, I've got a graph. Annual sales of a certain product can be modeled by this function, where S is the number of units sold and T is the number of years since the product went on the market. Use the graph to estimate the annual sales six years after the product went on the market. So if we put this into Y1, then I want to evaluate Y1 after six years. I'm going to show you two ways to do this on your calculator. Go over to your calculator. All right, let's first do this graphically because they asked us to use the graph. So let's go to y equals. Let's put in 60, 1, 2, 3, e, second ln key, to the negative 0.15x. Close your parentheses there. We want to know after six years, so uh, 0 to 10 will be enough. And let's see, I know one point, right? When t is 0, the e to the 0 is 1. So I know that 60,000 is the biggest that it can ever be because I know this is decay. So I know the y max is going to be 60,000. You see that? Because when t is 0, I have 60,000 units, and it's decay since that's negative. So let's go ahead and graph that. So they're asking us to estimate the annual sales after six years. So after six years is after one, two, three, four, five, six. It's whatever the y coordinate is right here. I like to do second calc. Remember that value key? That value key is going to allow me to see what the y value is when x is six. So when x is six, y is 24,394.18. 
The second way that I want to show you is if you don't want to graph it and go through all the trouble of finding your window and all that stuff, go ahead and put your equation into y equals. And then there's this really cool key. Remember before when we were doing our linreg and stuff and we were finding y1, we went to vars and we went over to y vars and we hit function y1. Let me do that again. Let me clear that. Vars go over to y vars. We're looking for a y variable. We're looking under function because all we're doing in this class is functions. And then y1. y1 of 6. That's just like saying f of 6, which we've done a lot more by this point in the course. y1 of 6 is, boom, 24,394.17958. I really, really like that vars, y vars, y1 key. I use it a lot when you get to calculus. Now you can either look at the graph or you can do, this is just like saying f of 6. Um, you can do it either way. I think this saves you a little bit of time, but some people really like the graphical way. It doesn't matter. You pick what you like best and we'll go with that. So I just got 24,394.18 so it says estimate the annual sales. S is a number of units sold. So you could round this or just say that many. Just make sure you say units because that's the number of units. Now we're going to do continuously compounded interest. Before we were doing compounded interest, and now we're going to learn about continuously compounded interest. We have the same variables here. A is just the amount in your account after two years. P is the principal or the original amount that you put in. R is the annual interest rate. Expressed as a decimal. And T is just your time in years. So you might compare this to our compound interest formula that we learned about in 7.1, and that was just A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the NT. What we learned, what we learned in the first slide of this lesson was that E was just the limit as N approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over N to the N. So you might notice that this right here is replaced with e to the r power in this equation right here. We have a equals p e to the r t. Reason being, we're continuously compounding here. We're letting n be some huge, huge number, and that's the same thing as what the limit as n approaches infinity means. If that's still a little bit iffy in your head, please just remember that continuously compounded interest is a equals p e to the r t. A lot of people say PERT to remember it. You deposit $3,000 in an account that pays 3.5% annually interest compounded continuously. What is the balance after three years? So you better believe we're going to use our PERT equation here. So we have 3,000 is the initial amount we put in, e to the r, which in this case is 0.035. T, which is 3 in this case, when we put this in our calculator, we should get $3,332.13. And that's it for this lesson.